As alarm mounted over the coronavirus ripping through the country, Mayor Lori Lightfoot of Chicago was barraged with warnings, such as Lollapalooza Festival was looking increasingly risky. The annual four-day music event would draw hundreds of thousands of people downtown, unmasked, crowded into mosh pits, city parks, restaurants, and L trains, setting up the threat of a super-spreader coronavirus event in the Midwest. The mayor insisted that the festival go on. Okay, um, that decision, of course... uh, was an attempt, I'm sure, to, to, to enliven downtown Chicago, the Loop area, the, the, uh, Grant Park, that whole area, which is just a phenomenal, it's a phenomenal city to begin with. But that area along, along the lake is just incredible. But I think what Mayor Lightfoot was trying to do was inject this energy, uh, uh, oh, and bring in the uh, the, the tourists uh, at the end of last month. Uh, and it reflected a shifting response to the continuing pandemic. And as the Times puts it, a year ago, Chicago was a muted version of itself. Businesses were restricted. Schools were preparing to teach remotely. Uh, the cops were blocking access to beaches on Lake Michigan. And Lollapalooza was canceled a year ago. It was just canceled. But this decision that was made last month, if you know Lollapalooza occurred, what was it? Last, not last weekend, but the weekend before. Um, and, and the mayor, with her advisors, of course, decided they just couldn't let it happen again. Was it a super spreader event? I think we'll find out very quickly. But what is happening as this incredibly contagious Delta variant of COVID-19 is ravishing the South, where I live. Georgia entered this uh, special group of states now with over a million people having been infected by this virus. Yeah. I think there are seven states and George is one of them. Anyway, um, it, 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 it has ravaged here in the South, but it's caused the numbers of people infected and in hospital and intubated in ICUs and dying. It's caused upticks in all those categories in all 50 states. And because of that, mayors and governors and public health officials have been very... Um, um, Indecisive, I I guess would be the word I would want to use when considering whether to reimpose restrictions. And the ones that haven't been indecisive have been flat out ridiculous, like the governor of Georgia, like the governors of Texas and, uh, and, and Florida, who have made it against the law to impose mandates for masks. A lot of school districts around the country are just saying to these governors, pardon me, fuck you. We're not going to pay any attention. Are you crazy? Especially now, have you been following the reports of the numbers of children? Children who are in hospital now. Who are in intensive care units. Who are dying. And still... These Christian fascist governors will do nothing within the power that they have to try to halt the spread of this. When are they going to do it? Are they going to do it next week? How many kids have to die before DeSantis or, or uh, the camp here in, here in Georgia or the rest of these bastards decide, okay, we better do something? How many dead children do you son of a bitches need? You pro-life hypocritical bastards, you. You're pro-fetus, and even that is not true. You're pro-control of women, and that's your handle, reaching inside her womb and squeezing her fetus, right? You sick bastards. So, 
now we're at the point with more than twice as many new virus cases being reported compared with last August. That's how bad this is. Baseball games and music festivals and, and state fairs have gone ahead. I mean, what the hell? Eat, drink, and be merry. You know, the, la- the next part of that, for tomorrow we shall die or something like that. But restaurants, gyms, and movie theaters have stayed open. In many places, people have been largely left to decide for themselves whether to start wearing masks again or change anything about their lifestyle. There is a vicious death-dealing virus stalking the country, and we are talking about whether or not to order the idiot's along with everybody else in this country, to put on a goddamn mask. Just do it. Calm down, Mike. So you can say that we Americans have entered a a whole new consciousness regarding this pandemic. And, and I think a lot of people, I for one, for sure, a lot of people are starting to understand that COVID-19 is not going to go away. Did the flu go away after the global pandemic of 1918 to 1920? No, it did not. You know what the killer flu was this, that year, those two years? It was type A, right? I had type A influenza 18 months ago even though I had been vaccinated. This COVID-19 coronavirus monster is not going to go away. It just isn't. It's not going to disappear. I had, uh, my kids have all had measles shots. Measles is still around. Mumps is still around. Scientists have been warning for months that COVID-19 was likely to become endemic, always going to be here, and that herd immunity was increasingly unlikely. Did herd immunity work for type A influenza? No, not to the extent that we would have liked it to work. I sure as hell would have liked to have avoided what I went through 18 months ago with type A influenza. Holy shit. This is one of those sicknesses where you think you're going to die and then get pissed off when you don't. An epidemiologist at the University of Michigan said, quote, we can't expect it to go away where we never have to think about it anymore. We've seen that it ebbs and flows. Sometimes we need to be more vigilant than other times, end quote. And as far as um, the... uh, the corona, this COVID-19 becoming endemic. And even though the vaccines are effective, the, the, the virus will continue to mutate and spread. And it has, this particular virus has mutated and spread at a pace that has surprised some of the medical experts. Boy, I don't like to read that. Hmm? I don't. But there's something, I I don't know if you've been aware of this. I think I mentioned it a couple of months ago. Have you noticed how cases of the flu have reduced to the point where they're not even mentioned in, in media any longer? Flu. And you know the reason? I think anyway, because of social distancing, mask wearing all last year for the most part, people being conscious, washing their hands, And as a result, that particular virus didn't have a chance to spread to the extent, to the degree that it normally does. And I think what medical science is trying to tell us is that we're going to have to adapt that idea, that reality into our behaviors where it concerns the future of COVID-19. It's not going to go away. Now, the summer... This summer started on a hopeful note. It really did. As the Times reports, the U.S. was reporting the lowest coronavirus uh, coronavirus cases totals since the start of the pandemic. 
And that's when officials gave permission for vaccinated people to shed their masks in a lot of situations, which gave permission to the dumbasses that are not vaccinated. Oh, well, I might as well shed mine too. What the hell? And then came that horrific cascade of outbreaks and overflowing hospitals and fear over what the virus would bring next. And now we know for one thing, what the virus has done has reached down into that 12 years old and younger cohort that has been unvaccinated and who have a lot of those kids have parents who are dumber than shit, who scream in school board meetings, my kid's not going to wear a mask. And the virus has reached into that cohort and said, oh, look here. Look what we've got. All these young bodies with not quite well-developed immune systems that we can devastate. And they all have parents who are dumbasses. Okay, not all of them. Anthony Montero of Tampa, who has a job in medical device sales, which frequently takes him into hospitals. He said, quote, I think we all took a step back and thought things were getting better. But now there's so many COVID patients. I feel like COVID is in the air everywhere I go. Well, yeah, Anthony, it is, especially where you are in Florida, right? So here we are, folks. Bummer, huh? Bummer squared. Bummer to the third or fourth power. Wow. Hi, Truth Seekers. Mike Malloy here. As you know, we've switched formats and are now broadcast exclusively on the Progressive Voices Network. So that means you get fewer program interruptions, no corporate commercials, and lots of profanity. But our format change also means some of our radio listeners no longer hear the program. It's been a while since I mentioned our podcasts, so you may have forgotten that there is a way to listen to this program anytime you need a good dose of screaming. Visit MikeMalloy.com and subscribe to our podcast. As a podcast subscriber, you can download the program to your mobile device and take me with you wherever you go. And if you have a friend who needs a dose of truth-seeking, you can give a gift subscription as well. That's MikeMalloy.com and never miss a minute of the uncensored fun and frivolity.